Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. I've got a little stash busting, 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 stash busting project for you. Yes, I should probably start it over, but I'm not going to. I had all these little frames in um, one of my cabinets, my craft room, and I mean, I have like seriously probably 50 of these little three and a half by five inch frames. I have a bunch of these little keychain frames. I have lots of little odds and ends frames that I picked up um, many, many years ago um, at like dollar stores and Martins and places like that, <clears throat> thinking they'd be really inexpensive ways to sell my little watercolor paintings in and I just found them again I'd forgotten all about them so I thought I think that's a great summer project great way to to kind of um, break the ice and I would just do a lot of little paintings and I can stick them in my booth where a lot of tourists shop during the summer so that's what we're gonna do today and I'm gonna paint a bird of paradise I'm just gonna sketch it on here with some watercolor pencils the photo I'm using is from paint my photo and they have moved their new address is pmp-art.com and this photo is by April Dupree who I believe is one of our frugal crafter family members I think so April if you're watching this thank you so much for posting your beautiful photo and um, I do appreciate it so I'm just drawing the bottom part of the bird of paradise flower there with the green and then I'm gonna go in with this red just so basically so you can see it I probably would just have drawn with lighter colors otherwise so I'm just getting these um, get the top part of that there if I go off the um, the paper I'm not going to worry about it because you know sometimes it's more interesting to see a um, to see artwork that has kind of you only see part of it you know sometimes cropped artwork is more interesting so I think I'm going to do that just kind of go right off the edge if you're using a bigger piece of paper you can go ahead and include it in its entirety I'll put a link to her photograph so you can go check that out as well there we go yeah I'm just gonna you know have that go right off the page because I think it'll be more interesting this way okay so now we're gonna go in with the paints and I'm using Yarko watercolors and I thought I was so prepared but I realized I didn't even have a brush over here but I do have my palette in uh, visibility for you so that you'll be able to see what I'm mixing for colors I'm gonna start off with some um, cad orange so right there or cad red light because I mean it's just a pre prevalent color here that I want to use that and I'm gonna go ahead and add it into one of these petals I'm actually gonna make this petal a little bit bigger and add it in there I am totally in summer mode now I am feeling very um, very relaxed I've got some projects done that I was working on it might get a little uh, lemon yellow I'm adding in there so I'm feeling very free just to do some kind of fun projects here I'm just gonna let those colors mix together I think I'm gonna bump up the color a little bit so I'm gonna add a little bit of red I just splashed water on my other papers I got eight sheets of um, of little mini painting papers by cutting up a 10 by 4 uh, 10 by 13 paper into um, into three and a half by five inch triangles there I'm gonna let that blend I'm gonna skip over to this one over here great just just a little warm-up you know play with your paints it's just a tiny little piece of paper so you can worry even less if it doesn't come out good a little bit with that I'm not I haven't really mixed anything all the mixing has been happening on the paper vary my colors a little bit here and I am gonna t I'm gonna wet this petal down here in front um, I am skipping between areas so that I don't have the paint flowing where I don't want it and I'm gonna add some red right along the top edge it's kinda like a crimson red here see there it is on my palette maybe I should have showed you the paint box instead of the top of the palette I'm letting that float down and I want a little bit of green. The green actually isn't really vivid. It's kind of like a chalky green color. Um, but I think I'm going to use some like hooker's green or sap green here. Hooker's green is very similar to sap green. It's maybe a little less earthy, but um, a lot of times you'll have hooker's green in a set of paints and you won't have sap green. So use whichever. So I'm keeping it kind of light. And the paint's not flowing super, super well. I'm using my Yarkas see I can kind of control it now I want to do a little purple in there but I think I will let's see do I want to use purple or do I want to mix it I don't see blue anywhere else I'm going to use it so I think I'll go ahead and use purple 
So if I knew I was going to want to be mixing blue a lot, then I'd go ahead and use, um, or mixing other colors, I'd go ahead and use blue. But since I don't see any other blue in there, I might as well just go right in with the purple. I just don't want to have too many colors going on, but I want to, I want to have nice vivid colors. And I'm just going over it with a damp brush to gently encourage those colors to blend, but I don't want mud. And I will get mud if they all, all blend equally. You can see down here how I have this gray. That's because everything started to mix up on me, and that's fine, because you do need a little bit of contrast of neutrals to make the brights kind of show up. The paper towels here. I've got to blot a bit because I have too much water there, and I'm going to end up with a, a backwash or bloom if I don't lift it out. Okay, now I think I am going to... Uh, I'm going to work on this area here, which is very purple. And to make it a little more interesting, because there is some white there, I'm going to go ahead and wet this area. This is my little warm-up painting for the day. I hope it comes out good. I guess if you're watching it, it probably came out good. If it, if, if, if it came out bad, I don't think I would post it. Usually that doesn't happen. I only have like maybe, you know, one video a month that, that is too horrible that I can't post. <laughs> Puts things in perspective though, because you see some of the horrible stuff I do post, so that does definitely, uh, definitely give you a little bit of, uh, what's the word? Uh, perception? <laughs> perspective, that's the word I mean. Perspective. Talking and painting. I don't do those two things well sometimes. There's like a little bit of a thingy there that I want to put in there. And let's see. Now I think I'll we'll go to this guy over here and wet it and put in some yellow. That lemon yellow I've already used. And then add a little bit of that hooker's green, the dirty brush, because it can be lighter. I can leave a little bit of a border of white there if I'm worried that my other color is going to flow in there. This color, this, this uh, paper doesn't seem too flowy, so I'm just going to go ahead and go right up next to it. I even try to uh, redefine my edge there a bit. And I'm getting a little impatient waiting for those flowers back there to dry, so I'm just going to go ahead and wet them and see what happens with my neighboring colors. Oh, I kind of like that. I kind of just like how the paint's doing its own thing. It's very, very freeing what's happening there. I like that. I might just let it do its thing. I like how the colors are just kind of whooshing around. I think I'm going to put a little bit of uh, lemon in there. I think I want to encourage that. I like that. I can always go in and define a little bit more later. And I've got a little orange there I need to put in. I'm not wetting my paper first because uh, I don't want it to bleed. And it's a kind of a small area. This is a pretty small painting, so it's all kind of a small area. And I think I will blot it off down there because it is a little bit lighter where it comes into the throat of the flower. I think I want a little bit more definition with the purple. I'm still using the same brush. This is a uh, number six round Royal Aqualon, so it comes to a nice point. Got a lot of control. It won't hold too much water. You don't probably don't want to brush like a Neptune on a small piece like this unless your brush is small because that would probably hold more water than you want. Oh, that's still wet. That's all right. That's okay because I actually wanted a little more color in there anyway. I meant to do that, I mean. Feeling mellow today, definitely feeling summer. Went to the beach yesterday, it was a lot of fun. I brought my watercolors with me. I thought that I was going to get some time to paint, but I also managed to, I also ended up bringing my dog, I'm wetting the background here. Um, I'm, I'm gonna leave a little bit of a dry border so that I have a little bit of a frame when I put this inside my plastic frame, which is, you know, goes right to the edge. So I wanted to have a little bit of a, a mat to it. Um, so I brought my dog, which means I did not get any painting done because being attached to a very wet, shaky, 90 pound golden retriever who likes to jump in the water at a moment's notice does not really become that conducive to painting, but that's all right. I didn't want to leave her home 
because when she got up, I think she had, I think her foot had fallen asleep when she, like, uh, in the morning, and when she got up, she was limping around a little bit, and I felt her leg and her paws and looked for anything that could be causing her pain. She didn't seem bothered by anything, but I think she might have had a little pebble or something between her toes that I couldn't feel, because as soon as she got in the water, um, because I didn't want to walk her for her leg was limping, and I want to keep an eye on her, but as soon as she got in the water and came around, she was... She came out, she was running around, no issues, so I think there might have been a little bit of a pebble or something, a little piece of gravel in her paws, and um, I think it rinsed out and wasn't bothering her after that. So, I always, always keep a good eye on my on my animals, so do, so do my kids. Actually, Maisie noticed the limp, so she's very, uh, very tender-hearted, and uh, so we couldn't let it go. I'm just dripping in some colors here. I have to be careful. The flowers are still wet up there, so I don't want to get too close or I'm going to end up with a muddy mess. But I didn't want this painting to take too long. I could have stopped and, uh, and hair dried it, but I was so carried away with my tail of doggy beachiness that I kept on trucking. Alright, maybe I'll mix some of these colors together and make a gray. Let's do that. Let's mix our purple and our green. Get some grayish kind of colors in there. That way it will dull it down a little bit. I think I need a little bit more of that wash in there. Let's see. There's our purple. I'm going to show you what I did with my palette too. I um, It's very hard to tell what these colors are. These are the Yarka colors and I believe they're the exact same as the White Knights, which are cheaper. Um, and so I swatched them out here on paper so that I could see what the actual color is because see that's that green I just used. That's what it looks like in the pan. It's very hard to tell what you have there. So um, there's a little tip for you. Because watercolors do not look the same wet, uh, I mean in the pans as they do when you uh, when you mix them out. There we go. See how it makes a nice black actually. Add some of that. So we'll have a nice lively gray that will match because we're using colors we've already used. And that's why I like to mix my own darks. And we can really make it. I was debating whether I wanted to do my background lighter or darker than my focal piece. You want them a different value because otherwise you're going to end up with nothing standing out and everything getting kind of blob together. So get me tempting fate there. So that's what I'm doing here, making it a little bit darker. But you could go either way. Just as so just so as there's some contrast. And sometimes I like to do darker shadows towards the bottom to give it a little more visual weight and lighter towards the top to um you know just kinda help it be more comfortable to look at. I think I want to get up a little bit closer to that. I'm trying not to get into any wet paint. That might be dry by now. I probably should have just stopped and dried it. Live and learn. You can do that. So you can benefit from my uh, impatientness. My impatience. I feel like I'm mumbling. I haven't shot any video in a couple of days. Because my kids, my girls, commandeered my camera. They started their own. Well, actually, I started a second channel for them to put their um, crafty projects on. And it's called The Crafty Twins, and there's a link to it um, on my YouTube channel main page um, over there with the recommended channels. I think it's called Cool Crafty Peeps or whatever, different channels I recommend. Um, but they've been having a ball with it, and um, I wanted to have it, you know, I I wanted to be in control of the channel just so I could keep an eye on, you know, comments and make sure nobody was being mean or anything. And, of course, I approve the videos before they go up. But it's a great, uh, a great channel for if you have kids. Uh, let the, you can let them watch it without worry. I mean, my kids are a little, you know, they use a glue gun a lot, so they I make sure they mention to ask parents permission before using a glue gun, so hopefully kids won't go off and use a glue gun without having knowledge about that. All right, I'm just going to dab that a bit. Now I, I'm going to dry it, and we'll come back and finish it up. Okay, I'm going to work on these petals up here first. I'm going to use some of the um, red I've already used and some of the orange I've already used and use those to intensify the uh, the colors here. So I've got this, actually this should be in front. So I'm going to go ahead and darken the petal in the back. I'm going to mix up a little bit more of that. Make it a little juicier. There we go. 
kind of define that petal in the back. And the one over here in the back. I'm adding color. I'm going to spread it in a second. I just want to get that color in there for now. A little bit of that up there. Just kind of go around and fuss with stuff a bit. So then clean my brush, dab it off, and then I can just kind of blend it a little bit. Don't overwork it or you'll end up lifting your dried layer of color. And that's probably not what you want to do. A little lemon yellow and some orange in the center area and a little bit over here do a little bit of purple um, in this area Help define it a bit and maybe a little bit of, oops, I get a drop on my brush. You have to, if you get a, like a drop on your brush and it rolls down onto your painting, it's going to be kind of a mess. So I just want to glaze up a little purple there. And I think I want to add a little bit of red right to there. And maybe a little bit of a gray green over here. And then I'm going to sign my name because it's just a tiny little painting. I didn't want to spend too much time on it. Just do a little bit of a little bit of warm-up painting here. So just my initials. LMW15. And that will go inside one of these little plastic frames when it's dry. And I will stick it in my display at the schoolhouse antique small in Brewer, Maine. And I'll probably put about probably like five bucks on these. Um, that way I'll be able to use up some of these old frames. People can get a nifty little piece of summary artwork for their fridge and all is well. And they seem to sell good at that price because I used to do that all the time. When I, when I first bought these frames, I painted tons of these and sold them for five bucks. So that's what I plan on doing. I want to thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And until next time, happy crafting.